Don't! Just don't talk about it! Welcome back to another episode of Brain Blaze. I, as always, am your host, Simon. Welcome, welcome. I'm here. One of my rights to this case, Kevin, has written me script. More infamous things caught on hot mics. You know when you ever see one of these more... What? This is just that's flying around all over the place. I had to adjust. I got this... I got this thing because I had this stand before. And Sam was like, who edits these videos? He was like, every time you slam the desk, Simon, I'm editing your video and it's like, boom! I'm like, oh, oh, stop! So uh, I did. I got this thing for you. I did actually buy this. I had this in my cupboard and I took it out and I used it instead. I find it less than preferable, but I do this for you, Sam because I love you. Uh, what I was saying is the reason we do, we've do we done a video like this before, the reason we're doing another one is because the first one did well, because that's how capitalism works. Let's carry on. So-called hot mic moments come in many different forms. Sometimes it's literally a hot mic, a microphone that a person believes is no longer recording due to a commercial break or something. Hey, the sign! Other times, that's not a literal hot mic. A literal hot mic would be this. Ow! Ah! Oh, so hot! And then you burn your lips. Other times it could be a voicemail, a conversation with a reporter they thought was off the record, or a camera that the person didn't realize was still rolling. It's come up many times on this channel, but if you ever see a camera or a microphone, just assume that it is on. Honestly, just, just live your life, <laughs> assuming that, okay? And remember that nothing is ever truly off the record. Journalists may use and trust confidentiality as currency, but they aren't legally obligated to keep your secrets, at the very least to make sure they agree to keep something off the record before opening your mouth. You can't tell a journalist I murdered five reporters and buried them under that tree over there, and then follow it up with a claim of it being off the record as an afterthought. No, it is important. Whenever I've talked to journalists, I'm always like, yo, off the record? <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, always, I'm never want to be quoted. F*** that. <laughs> Then again, in that particular situation, I'd just agree with whatever the person had to say. Otherwise, they'd be telling the next journalist where the bodies of their six victims are. Silvio Berlusconi swipes left. If you've never heard the name Silvio Berlusconi before, congratulations on being a product of the American education system. I... really? He's like the... he's like this great... he's dead now. <laughs> He's like the Italian Prime Minister and he had these crazy sex parties and stuff. His European <laughs> craziness. Berlusconi was the longest serving Prime Minister of the Italian Republic. Yeah, that too. Italy's government founded following World War II. Berlusconi is no stranger to scandals or saying outrageous things, but most of the things he said were completely public rather than being caught on a hot mic. For example, Berlusconi was well aware that everybody would hear him when he said that victims rendered homeless by an earthquake should see their tent cities being like a weekend of camping. <laughs> Obama was sundance. <laughs> and that there would never be enough soldiers and police to protect Italy's overabundance of beautiful girls from sexual assault. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Berlusconi, the sh you say. That's the sh he says on the record. Unsurprisingly, none of these comments went over very well, but in 2011, Berlusconi would say something that he didn't think anybody would hear. At that time, he was the target of blackmail. <laughs> and had paid out 500,000 euros. Holy shit, what do they have on him? The blackmail centered around his now infamous bunga bunga parties. Well, that, and that definitely came out, so he didn't pay enough blackmail money, did you, Berlusconi? And the claim was that one of the sex workers he entertained was underage. Bro, it's not looking good, because if it didn't happen, you'd be like, bro, it didn't happen. Fuck you. But if he's like, here's $500,000, <laughs> it's not looking good, old Berlo, is it? As part of the investigation to track down the blackmailers, investigators tapped Berlusconi's phone. You'd think that's something he would have been aware of, seeing as the investigation was to protect him, but either he wasn't aware of it, or he just forgot. Berlusconi was on a phone call with newspaper editor Volta Lavatola, who was also coincidentally the person ordering sex workers for the bunga bunga parties. That is a hell of a coincidence. <laughs> At least Berlusconi's at these uh, bunga bunga sex parties. He's like, hey, no one's gonna write this up. The editor's my mate. He brought the underage sex workers. Allegedly. Allegedly underage. And allegedly he did this. I mean, we don't have to allegedly for Berlusconi because he's fing dead. But this guy. What was his name? Volta? Hey, I don't know if he did anything wrong. I'd never say that. That's just what might have been reported by somebody who isn't me. Italy's got famously heavy laws around this stuff. So maybe we even have to be careful about Berlusconi. <laughs> Who knows? Sex parties and blackmail are allegedly. <laughs> 
Aside, this wasn't a great time for Italy in general. Allegedly, they were facing another financial crisis and were really counting on Germany to bail out their government. Allegedly. I'm gonna stop. It's just getting silly. Given this delicate diplomatic situation, you can only imagine the German government's surprise when newspapers reported that Berlusconi referred to Angela Merkel as an un lard ass during a wiretapped phone call. Jesus Christ. Sadly, to the best of my knowledge, the actual audio has never been released and the claims come from transcripts of the calls. Then again, I'm sure he said it in Italian, so it's not like he would be able to understand him anyway. While the insult made worldwide headlines, it was soon overshadowed by the myriad of allegations and charges against Berlusconi. While he was originally convicted of hiring the underage sex worker, he was later acquitted on appeal. It seemed like this comment had faded into the annals of history with all of his other inappropriate comments until 2014 when Berlusconi sat down with BBC reporter Jeremy Paxman. The interview went normally at first, when amidst a series of largely unrelated questions, Paxman asked, do you have a particular problem with Angela Merkel? Is it true you called her an unfuckable lard ass? Holy sh**, Jezza. Like, just he's, he's just doing these regular questions like, tell me about your early life becoming the Prime Minister of Italy. Did you uh, call Angela? <laughs> God damn, Jezza! Boom! After about 15 seconds of stunned silence, Berlusconi tried to deny the claim, but I don't think anybody really believes him. Just to give some reference here, just how long 15 seconds is when you're doing video. Let me just illustrate that. pretty uncomfortable, isn't it? It's a pretty long time to just sit there silently before answering a question. <laughs> Jesus. You're a nice guy, but I will bury you. There have been a lot of people in Hollywood that have a reputation of being difficult to work with, be it actors, directors, or Harvey Weinstein. Harvey Weinstein is, is, is a little bit beyond being difficult to work with, you know, him being a convicted R-wordist and all that. Most of this stuff happens behind the scenes. For example, there are an infinite number of stories of how awful it was to work with Stanley Kubrick. But all we have are the stories. The great part of being the director is that you decide when it's time for the camera to roll, so all of his tirades and hijinks could take place when they weren't recording. But in 2009, on the set of Terminator Salvation, Christian Bell was not so lucky. At first, the leaked audio made it sound like a normal day of filming. Everybody was taking their places, and the director was making sure everything was set so they could start filming the scene. Just as the scene was beginning, the film's director of photography, Shane Harbert, walked directly into Bale's line of sight, possibly onto the set, to check a light. Bale absolutely lost it, and what followed was an uncomfortable three and a half minute tirade against Shane. Am I going to walk around? rip your f***ing lights down in the middle of a scene, then why the f*** are you walking right through ah, da, 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 like this in the background? What the f*** is it with you? To be fair to Bale, he wasn't 100% wrong. He handled the situation extremely poorly and there was absolutely no excuse for how long his ranting lasted. I'm not going to rant for three and a half minutes, but Jesus Christ, is that a rant? Surely at some point you must be like, what am I doing? And then just you carry on! <laughs> But it sounded like the guy really did scrub the screen scene. And if Bale's angry ranting is to be believed, this wasn't even the first time that he'd walked onto the set during filming. I understand the anger and the frustration that would cause, though the response was still far too extreme. Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. But not only was it extreme, it was also really fucking weird. Bale spent the duration of his outburst shouting at this guy with so much anger that you'd think Shane had just banged his fucking wife. And the whole time he kept doing so, he kept up his fake American accent. It's the second time that he doesn't give a f about what is going on in front of the camera. Oh yeah, of course, because he's British. I just remember I've heard the tape and it's like he's just doing his American accent. That's fine though. Like he's in, he's, he's on the set. Maybe the whole time while he does these uh, movies in American, he keeps an American accent because that kind of would make sense because then you're not going in and out of it. You're just sticking with it. You're practicing it and it's going to sound really good. And look, I don't know. Seems like Christy Bell's got a pretty good American accent in my ears. Not that I would know. It's well known that Bell likes to use whatever accent he had in a movie while promoting it to create continuity with the promotion and the finished work. But if he was really that angry, you'd think he'd just start shouting in his normal English accent. No, no, I disagree. I think like if he's in character and if he's on set and he's doing all of these things, he'd just keep it up. And he's probably very used to it. So 
I, I don't think it's that strange. The other strange part is that Bale still complimented Shane while essentially threatening to get him fired. Bale warns that if this happened one more time, that he wouldn't come back on set if Shane was still hired, which he immediately followed up by saying, You're a nice guy, you're a nice guy. To his cri Yeah, but this is. I don't know. I don't think that's that weird. It's like he's separating the man from the professional. And it's like, he's like, maybe this guy's the nicest guy in the world, but he's absolutely shit at his job. And Christian Bell's like, bro, I like you, but you fucking suck at your job. That's the two separate things. I don't know. I, I, I've heard this rant and it does seem really harsh. But I also get it. To his credit, Bale called into a local radio station that had done a number of comedy segments based on the leaked audio, and he apologized for what happened. He admitted that he was completely at fault and that he and Shane had already made up, and he didn't attempt to make any excuses for his inexcusable behavior. Yeah, I'm not saying it's excusable. I'm just saying there's reasons. It's like, if I was him, if I was doing the, the, the apology rounds for this or whatever, I'd be like, yo, it was a stressful day, I didn't find the guy to be very professional, and I just lost it it was really stressful and it's not good like that's fine bro we all make mistakes and this this is like unpleasant but it's not like <laughs> it's not like cancel christian bale because he got upset three and a half minutes is a lot though isn't it bro <laughs> i'd say bale handled the aftermath of his initial blow up about as well as he could but i'm also sure that millions more people have listened to his tirade than his apology access hollywood recently Oh, wait, that's the end of the entry, and yeah, Access- There's no line, Kevin! There's no line, so I don't know when the new entry is. Access Hollywood. Recently on this channel, we talked about the concept of an October surprise. <laughs> Recently? I literally recorded that video about half an hour ago, because I did two in a row, baby. Great job. Or maybe we'll talk about it later. I have no idea what order these videos are going to come out in, but the most famous October surprise in recent years is also one of American politics' most infamous hot mic moments. The year was 2005, and Donald Trump was about to guest star on an episode of Days of Our Lives, a trashy soap opera that had already been running for 40 years. Trump was in the parking lot inside a bus used for the show Access Hollywood, another NBC show that conducted behind-the-scenes interviews and was normally garbage fluff pieces that aren't very interesting. This time, they did catch something interesting, but they decided not to air it. During the interview, if you can even call it that, host Billy Bush and Trump are having a casual conversation in which Trump decided to mention that he's tried to sleep with Bush's co-host, Nancy O'Dell. There's a lot of crude language involved, but the whole thing could pretty well be written off as locker room talk. He said he tried to sleep with Nancy, who was married at the time, but that he failed. It was kind of gross and sleazy, but it was mostly whatever. It was what followed that caught people's attention. In a comment allegedly regarding Dave of our lives star ariana zucker trump said i better use some tic tacs just in case i start kissing her you know i'm automatically attracted to beautiful women i just start kissing them it's like a magnet just kiss i don't even wait and when you're a star they let you do it you can do anything grab them by the <coughs> you can do anything look everybody i'm petting the kitty <laughs> this is so fucked up bro <laughs> It's pretty fucked up. It's so f It's pretty fucked up, isn't it? It's worth noting Trump was regarded as being totally aware that he was being recorded and also that Bush hadn't asked any sort of question to elicit this monologue. Trump just decided to say all of that because apparently, why not? For a lot of people, that went way beyond just being gross and sleazy. It started to sound an awful lot like it fit the legal definition of assault. It does, doesn't it? It's like, yo, sleazy talk, locker room talk, whatever. It's unpleasant. Do I like it? No. But do people do it? Sure. But this is like, when you're a star, it's like, oh, dude, stop. I'd say that the release of this tape was followed by multiple claims of sexual misconduct on the part of Trump, which would be true, but it was also preceded by many such claims as well. However, it did draw a whole lot more attention to those claims as Trump's own statements lent the allegations a bit of credibility. Polling showed a severe drop in support for Trump following the release of this tape, but it obviously didn't make a difference as he went on to win the presidential election the following months anyway. It's a feature, not a bug. Back in the olden days, if you want to be able to talk to people during a co-op video game, then you needed to rely on third-party software like Ventrilo 
or TeamSpeak. Okay then, never heard of either of these. These applications worked fine enough, particularly because they were only designed to do one thing. However, as online play became more popular, many games were designed with the ability to talk to your teammates built into the software. This made it much easier to communicate, since you no longer needed to have an additional program running, but there was a potential risk. Online games tend to receive frequent updates, and whenever you change a line of code, there is always the risk that it will somehow break something that was completely unrelated. That's exactly what happens with the first-person shooter Valorant on June the 6th, 2023. Oh, this is super recent, when Riot released Patch 6.11. The default game setting is push to talk, which means your mic is only on while you hold down the voice key. However, I can see where this is going. However, the 611 patch included a bug that would randomly change someone's settings mid-game from push to talk to toggle. This means that the person who was holding down the voice key to talk could have unknowingly toggled their mic on, and everything they said would continue to be broadcast to their team until they pressed the key again. There wasn't one individual moment that stands out above the rest, but the hot mic bug provided a plethora of clips from streamers of all different sizes that all went massively viral. Have I never heard of any of this? Most of it was what you'd expect from an online game. With people's mics accidentally being turned on while uh, they talk to Twitch chat about how dodged their teammates were. Those are the most interesting clips, as pretty much everybody who plays online games like these says things about their teammates. In one smaller star clip, Pokemane was telling her chat why she abandoned her teammates and let them die, effectively sabotaging her team. When the team let her know that she'd heard it, she immediately shut off the game and left her stream room in embarrassment. Some of the hot mics were mundane, like people loudly eating food or discussing weekend plans with chat. Streamer Takibi spent a solid 20 seconds explaining her new haircut to chat before one of her teammates turned on his mic and asked if she could explain it again. Just like a lot of layers and it's heavier on top and then uh, the bottom layers are really like thin. Could you explain that again, please? Huh? Oh, what the heck? Ah, just like a woman. Ah. <laughs> Legend. Hey, can you explain that again? It's fascinating. But not all of the incidents were nearly so innocuous. One British player encountered the hot mic pug while he was explaining the rules to this game Soggy Biscuit, or as an American knows it, Ookie Cookie. I don't know this one. If you're unfamiliar with the rules of the game, don't worry about it. Oh god, is this like... I'm assuming this is like the game. This is another... <laughs> oh god. I know this game by a different thing. <laughs> Dude. If you're unfamiliar with the rules of the game, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I don't actually think anyone ever actually played it. Good. Another player experienced the bug while having an in-depth conversation about the various types of hentai that he did and didn't enjoy. Oh, guys, so embarrassing. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, there were countless clips of people whose mics were turned on while they were either watching porn, masturbating, or both. <laughs> The best part of these clips are all the creative ways that their teams would let the person know their mic was on. Like one girl asking an exposed masturbator, Did you finish? Why is everyone on the internet so horny? <laughs> Even less surprisingly, there were also numerous clips of kids being yelled at by their mothers to stop playing video games and do their homework or chores. Then again, those clips may have been worse for the teammates than the kid with the hot mic. I have to imagine it's pretty embarrassing for a streamer to be hard carried by a literal child. Hard carried? I don't get that. I just don't know the gaming terminology. I call her eye patches. Our final entry today comes from the California State Assembly. The July 8, 2009 Appropriations Committee meeting began much like any other meeting. A bunch of boring, bureaucratic stuff happened and nobody cares. It wasn't until the committee took a brief recess that things got interesting. Assemblyman Mike Duval started talking to fellow committee member Jeff Miller about the affair that he was currently having with a lobbyist for a major California energy company. <laughs> Bro, what are you doing? <laughs> He began the conversation simply by saying, She wears little eye patch underwear, so I call her eye patches. The other day, she came here with her underwear, Thursday, and so we had made love Wednesday, a lot. And so she's all, I'm going up and down the stairs, and Nope, 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 stop talking, go to jail. Oh, God, bro, I'm not reading that. I'm not reading that. It's extremely graphic and why are you talking <laughs> why are you talking about that with your mate why are you talking about that with your mate and there's a camera rolling jesus christ 
Mike went on talking about how much he liked to spank her and how he told her that she was getting too old for him because she had just turned 36 even though he was 54. Miller then asked if there was another and Mike began talking about another woman, either Cher or Shah, he didn't seem to remember. He said, oh, she is hot, I talked to her yesterday. She goes, so are we finished? I go, no, we're not finished. You know about the other one, but she doesn't know about you. It was at this point that a sound technician walked over to the two laughing assemblymen and informed them that their microphones were on. Thanks, so. I know it's on! <sighs> While it certainly doesn't seem that anybody else in the room could hear them, their conversation had just permanently become part of the official audio and video recordings of the meeting. Mike may have thought he dodged a bullet because everything was quiet for a couple of months, but on September the 8th, exactly two months after the conversation, KCAL 9 News aired parts of the video from the committee meeting. The same night, OC Weekly published the full transcripts, complete with all the lurid details the broadcast television couldn't dare, and Simon wishes he hadn't, didn't just read. Oh, I didn't. See, Kevin, ahead of this game. By noon the next day, Mike had resigned his position. The FBI conducted an investigation into the incident and declared that Mike would not be facing federal charges. For what? <laughs> it's extremely unpleasant. He seems like a unpleasant person, but federal charges? For what? Honestly, I find this pretty shocking. While the media did give him the nickname Hot Mike Duvall, it was very much because of this incident and not because of his physical appearance. I know what Mike looked like back then, and I know what the lobbyist he slept with looks like now. Even at 50, she would have been way out of the 54-year-old Mike's league. So at 36, there's no way she was sleeping with him unless the energy companies were getting something out of it. Whoa, in Kevin's alleged opinion, allegedly. Jesus. I suppose there's always the chance that Mike was just really charming the lobbyists had severe daddy issues, but having listened to the conversation, I feel confident in saying that he's definitely not charming. What? Allegedly? All of this is very alleged and in here, not in my opinion. But let this be an important reminder to the five people in our audience who this applies. If you want to brag to your co-worker about carrying on multiple affairs you're having while at a meeting that you know is legally required to be recorded, maybe step away from the microphone while you're on recess and go and talk about it in the hall. DON'T! Just don't talk about it! Why were you doing? Do it. Talk about it in the garden. Have you never seen any spy movies? There's always microphones. Just don't be a douchebag. Simple. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Ow! Ah! Oh, so hot!